Hi, this is David Abank Turtle. Welcome to video 8E, which is the fifth and final video devoted to the topic of risk management and investment management. Of course, that's a part two topic for the 2012 FRM. That means we finish with several papers. Some of these are really brief in terms of the concepts we're exposed to and that don't have learning spreadsheets associated because the aims here are generally of the qualitative or conceptual sort. That is to say, if you look at the study guide, you'll see aims like describe, explain, discuss, as opposed to compute. And so quite a few qualitative concepts here, including in these readings, trust and delegation, Madoffs, a ride of red flags. Two readings from Andrew Lowe, who's a favorite in the FRM, for his quantitative perspective on hedge funds, although ironically, our burden here is really more qualitative. And then a chapter from Leslie Rawls, uh, Risk Budgeting, that reappears. It's been in the FRM for several years. You might think that makes it highly testable. It actually does not. It just continues to have low testability. And so we start with trust and delegation, where the paper, this paper is posed for questions. One, do hedge fund managers accurately represent material facts to their investors? And the authors find that reporting issues are significantly associated with measures of operational risk. Two, does the due diligence process successfully identify inadequate or failed internal processes? The authors say that we find that a failure to use a well-known accounting firm Reliance on internal pricing and in inadequate signature controls are associated with operational risk. Three, we build a single operational risk score based on evidence of imperfect or failed internal processes taken directly from the DD reports. Four, we find evidence that exposure to operational risk does not appear to be a factor influencing investor decisions. I should say that's due diligence. Due diligence firms specialize in gathering and verifying information potentially relevant to an operational risk assessment. They are typically retained by clients who are considering an investment in a hedge fund and who wish to gather more information beyond what is provided by the fund's prospectus and by regulatory filings. We find that funds with legal and regulatory problems have poor operational controls. Problem funds are less likely to have independent pricing. Problem funds are more likely to have switched vendors in the last three years. And finally, problem funds are less likely to have a major auditor. The novel feature of the due diligence reports is that they document in some considerable detail inadequate or failed internal processes, factual misrepresentation, and inconsistencies in statements and materials provided by hedge fund managers. Now, and now the uh, paper on Madoff called A Riot of Red Flags. We're asked to discuss Bernie, Bernard Madoff Investment Securities and its business line. So that included a brokerage business that started as a pure brokerage business. It quickly embraced technology and started focusing on electronic trading. It also listed itself as a member of the near defunct Cincinnati Stock Exchange. It was involved in developing the NASDAQ stock market. And by 1989, Bertie Madoff Investment Securities was a market maker handling fully 5% of the volume on the New York Stock Exchange. When the brokerage business became very competitive and Marge started to shrink, Bernie, Bernard Madoff started a separate advisory firm and in, as of 2008, 700 million in equity capital, 10% of New York Stock Exchange trading volume, and 200 employees at Bernard Madoff Investment Securities. And so Madoff ran a strategy in which he claimed that it delivered a 10 to 12% annual returns by actively trading a portfolio. 